How'd you guys like those candles in the background? It's such a vibe right now in here. It's such a cozy vibe. I was at uh, Costco earlier today. I decided that it's a good idea for me to get a men's sweater because it was a small and it looked like it was a slim fit. So I figured it would make a great house dress. I will show you my little house dress afterwards. Also, I couldn't decide between cider or wine. So I, I'm kind of having both. Hope I don't get demonetized for showing alcohol, but it's this one and cider and wine for those indecisive moments. Here's my new house dress slash men's sweater. Here's my little house dress slash men's sweater paired with very fashionable leggings from Sweet Legs. Not sponsored, not sponsored, just super cozy. Yeah, this is my home hanging out look quarantine special yeah so that's where i'm at how are you guys doing i hope everybody had a really good christmas now that the year is tapering off i'm going to share with you guys my favorite and hatest releases of 2020 by the way before we get into it the word hatest quick sidebar i came up with it in grade three you're welcome you're welcome to use it it's my word i don't care you guys use it if you enjoy it it's the opposite of favorite. So, hatest, the one you hate the most. It's pretty obvious. I thought it was pretty creative because I was an ESL kid. So, coming out of me in grade three, I'm pretty impressed with myself. A lot of people have adopted it ever since. You guys are welcome to as well. Favorite and hatest of 2020. These specifically are 2020 releases that came out this year. So, I'm gonna avoid going into 2019 releases or any fragrances that I discovered this year. I'm focusing specifically on releases of 2020, hits and misses. Well, I guess we might as well start with my scent of the day, which is Chloe Nomad Absolu de Parfum. I have the original Chloe Nomad, which came out in 2018. It has a prominent note of Mirabelle, and it's a really nice modern chicre. The Absolu, I only have a sample of, but this is at the top of my to buy list. This little gem is to die for this is so beautiful i have it on my arm right now and this is that piney woody sizzly fragrance that i've been looking for all my life i have seriously been looking for a feminine fragrance that has a little bit of tartness a little bit of sweetness a little bit of fruitiness and that forest vibe this fragrance smells like a beautiful forest it doesn't have any like dirty earthiness it's just crisp and piney that oak moss is beautiful and there is a note in there that is a plant that i don't know this plant but i'm telling you guys it smells piney like a beautiful evergreen forest and the note of mirabella is still there there is no citrus in this one which is great because it adds more depth it doesn't have that zinginess that the original one has which the original one, by the way, I adore, and it's a beautiful spring-summer scent. The Absolute is more of an all-year-rounder, and I have to say I do prefer the Absolute because of the longevity, because of that beautiful scent profile that makes it so nice and woody and piney, specifically like an evergreen forest. It's stunning and to me, it's like a Christmassy holiday scent, which is, I guess, why I went with it today because we're getting into the new year, hopefully a good one, and the scent just makes me feel optimistic and bright, and it's really something unique from the house of Chloe, which, you know, they have, in my opinion, an equal amount of hits and misses. This one is one of their greatest hits, IMO. I guess I should tell you guys what I'm judging these on. Hits and misses are very subjective. I'm judging these on performance. I'm judging them on how unique they are and how much I personally like the scent. So yes, it is gonna be a bit of a subjective video. You guys may or may not agree with some of my opinions. I'm not trying to yuck anybody else's yum over here. I'm just telling you in my opinion what I think is a good release and what isn't and why. So if you guys like opinionated fragrance videos, hit that subscribe button because I don't sugarcoat things. We're here to talk about fragrance and 
it's a little uncensored on this channel. So moving on, we're gonna go with a miss. And the miss, I don't have a sample of because I don't like it. And it is Tom Ford Bitter Peach. Bitter Peach because, because even though the performance is excellent, it was very misleading and it lied to me and I'm mad at this fragrance because I went into Holt Renfrew and I sprayed it on my arm and I was overjoyed by this tangy, juicy, like underripe peach that was so appealing and so beautiful and bright and I was like, man, I need to buy this. I, I swear to you guys, I was gonna buy this fragrance on the spot. But I was like, no, no, take it to your car ride it out and see how you feel about it. And I'm glad I did because that peach note lasts all of two minutes. And then it just becomes a very similar scent to Mugler Angel, which even though was groundbreaking when it came out in the 90s, really isn't groundbreaking anymore. And from Tom Ford, like, come on, if you're gonna call it bitter peach, can I have a bitter peach, please? This one, was underwhelming, not unique. It's been done and really I expected more from Tom Ford. So that's gonna be a miss, a hard miss for me. If it were the opening for longer, if that peach note stayed, it would have been a massive hit, but alas, it is not. And the next fragrance is from Guerlain and this is Mon Guerlain Bloom of Rose EDP. The Bloom of Rose EDP, I really love, and it's a beautiful rose-centric, a little bit more sweet version of the Bloom of Rose EDT. I love it, it's different, it's different, and it's a different Mont Guerlain flanker, which I appreciate because what's the point of releasing up flankers if they're all gonna be very similar? So this one is a richer, sweeter, more jammy rose in here. Still very reminiscent of the original Mon Guerlain, still that lavender, still that same scent profile, but this is for the rose lover. This is different enough, it's unique enough, the longevity is excellent, so this is gonna be a hit. The next fragrance is from Chanel, and this is the Chanel Night Fragrance. This is the Chanel Coco Mademoiselle L'Eau Privé Night Fragrance. I'm gonna show you the bottle and avoid showing you my broken nail. So it's a really beautiful frosted glass bottle. Still the same design as the original Coco Mademoiselle, still the same scent profile, but a really beautiful frosted glass packaging. This is a Coco Mademoiselle without patchouli. It's less deep, it's more watery, it's meant to be worn in the evenings to bed, not as an evening scent, not as an intense evening going out scent, more of a winding down version of Coco Mademoiselle, in which case it is successful. However, the longevity is very poor. Two to three hours, the longevity is very poor. The scent bubble is small, whereas the original Coco Mademoiselle projects it, everyone catches it, and everyone gives me compliments on it. The Coco Mademoiselle is a compliment monster. This one, you have to come very, very close to smell it. It's still a beautiful fragrance, but it's not unique. It's not long lasting. And even though I personally do like this scent, it smells almost identical to the original Coco Mademoiselle. And so I might as well just wear less of the original Coco Mademoiselle. I am gonna say this is a miss for 2020. By the way guys, on the note of Coco Mademoiselle, I did do a comparison video of the original versus the Intense. If you guys wanna see a comparison of all three, including the Night Fragrance, comment down below and let me know if that's something that's interesting to you and I can weigh out all the differences between the three fragrances. I'll keep it short and sweet as I always do in my comparison videos. Moving on, YSL Libre Intense. Because the original YSL Libre was a huge hit and now an award-winning fragrance. I guess they came out with the intense version to capitalize on it as much as they can. And I do not blame YSL because why not make as much as you can on a good fragrance? And this one's excellent. I really love it. 
I did do a comparison video on this one and the original Libre, so I won't get into it too much, but it's a richer, boozier, more vanilla centric, more sexy evening version of the original Libre, which is a little bit more of a clean scent. I think this is unique, very unique, different from a lot of fragrances on the market, extremely long lasting, beautiful scent bubble, and I adore the scent. It's gorgeous and it's a great spin on the original Libre. I myself do feel like it's worth owning both because this is more of like an evening sexy sensual fragrance more vanilla dense and boozy as i've already mentioned um so it's gonna be a hit it's a huge hit the original libre is one of my most worn fragrances of the year and the intense is also one that i reach for often especially now in the colder months so it's a hit Okay, before I forget, because I don't have a full bottle or a sample, I want to talk about Giorgio Armani My Way. When I saw this bottle, I just thought it was so cringy because it's just like, it's just too gimmicky. It looks like a, like I love it, but I hate it at the same time. It looks like a spin on the design of their uh, Privé bottles, which is their expensive like niche line the my way i guess the bottle design is very very similar to that except like more of a cartoony that's the word i'm looking for more of a cartoony take on it so initially i was a little put off by the bottle but also intrigued um, because i like the contrast of the cap and the name and i don't know something kind of compelled me to try it so i did and it is gorgeous and i love it i love a nice white floral there is something so captivating about the scent i sprayed it on myself several times when i went into sephora when i went into shoppers drug mart and just today i went in because i wanted to try it again because i wanted to prep for this video and i wanted to be sure of my opinion on it so i've worn it probably about four or five times now which is less than i usually wear fragrances before i review them but enough for me to kind of really make up my mind about it. And I really like it because I've liked it consistently from the moment that I applied it. And this one is for somebody who likes a sweet fragrance. It is for somebody who likes a white floral. It has a beautiful tube rose and a beautiful jasmine note. But not only that, it has this juiciness. On Fragrantica, there is no mention of the notes in the opening being this burst of berries. And it's there, guys, I'm telling you, this fragrance opens with this gorgeous burst of like like a mixture of blackberries and raspberries and strawberries like to me i was like what is this like it keeps like morphing into a different berry and it's beautiful and it's like a burst like those gusher candies you know those like gusher candies that have this like juicy middle and they just like explode in your mouth like this fragrance explodes in my nose with a burst of like fruitiness and it's so like tangy and yummy it's just like it's really good it's a really good nice unique take on a white floral i love that berry burst and it actually reminded me a lot of the burberry her not the intense because it's a little bit more powdery even though that one does have blackberry but for some reason to me i guess i'm smelling more strawberry there is like a fruity like almost like a passion fruit because there's that tanginess and almost like a sourness with a gorgeous like rich white floral not mature it's very girly it's appropriate for like anybody even just starting to venture into fragrances it's beautiful it's complex enough for somebody who's been dabbling in fragrances for a while to appreciate and i just think it's a really great release from armani i think it's really pretty I know a lot of people like rouge malachite and uh Ver malachite and those are white floral based fragrances and if you maybe can't afford a niche and i'm not saying that they're super similar but definitely give my way a try because it has this very like captivating and addictive beautiful white floral scent that i am definitely gonna need a full bottle so that is a huge 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 hit that is a slapper definitely try it if you guys haven't i don't know why i love it so much but i really really do I guess since we're talking about white florals, let's talk about Valentino Voce Viva. That is a white floral that actually is quite boring and doesn't really offer anything new to the table. And I'm not really impressed with it. The longevity is kind of shit. 
and um, yeah, I just, I was talking to my friend Ilithia from The Simple Chic Life and she too said that she finds it a little bit boring because there's like, there's so many white florals out there. There's so many different white floral fragrances that when you're gonna come out with a white floral, I feel like put a spin on it now, put an edge, do something that makes it stand out. And the Voce Viva isn't really ticking any boxes for me. It like really isn't doing much for me. It's a little bit of a disappointment. The longevity is also not great. Um, and it's not unique. And even though it's a nice sweet smell, I, I'm gonna say I don't really like it because it's super boring. It's super, super boring and it's just, oh, it's a snooze fest. So that one's a miss, a hard, hard miss. And evidently not only for me. So yeah. We're gonna keep going with the white floral train because there's another white floral that I really like and it's from Chanel. And you guys know I love Chanel. And this is Gabrielle Essence. And yeah, my bottle's almost empty because I did decant the bejesus out of this. I wore this also a lot. Like I probably wore half of the bottle and then decanted a little bit of the rest and I got a little baby bottle because I, I'll tell you guys, I don't really love the original Gabrielle and I blind bought this one and I was afraid that it would be a lot like the original Gabrielle, which is lackluster and kind of boring. And this one is opulent and beautiful and womanly. It's a really nice white floral and it's a different offering from Chanel and so it is unique. It lasts a long time on my skin and it's a compliment getter for me. Everybody loves this. Everybody at work loves this. Even people at work that say they don't like white florals still compliment me on this fragrance. So obviously it's doing something right. This is different and better than Gabrielle. It does like share a small similarity with Dior J'adore, but this is so much more rich, so much more sophisticated and unique and womanly that like this is just an all around winner. Go for the Gabrielle Essence. Don't even bother with the original Gabrielle. I just, I just feel like it's not unique enough at all, but that one's like last year or the year before it's released. So we're not gonna talk about it, but the Gabrielle Essence is a huge hit. So yeah. Love it, and I love my white florals, so that is why I guess it's a huge hit. If you guys don't like white florals, don't bother, but I'll say this one is probably one of the more kind of, like it doesn't follow the same Chanel framework. It doesn't have that same Chanel vibe. You know, when you smell a Chanel fragrance, you can like recognize that it's a Chanel because it has a, a certain common scent profile. This one's different. This one's really, really different, and like it's like, it's super unique for Chanel, so huge hit. How many times did I say huge hit? Three, four? Okay, I have a few more white floral fragrances to mention, so we're gonna pause on those, and we're gonna come back to them later, and we're gonna jump around a little bit. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Just hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. It's time, you've made it this far, it's time to subscribe. Now, we're gonna go, we're gonna go with a men's fragrance, Dior Homme 2020, and it's a huge hit. Just kidding, it sucks, it's a miss. It's quite a boring scent profile. It's been done a million times before. You might as well just go for Bleu de Chanel. You might as well go for any sort of like Ambroxan Balm fragrance, such as Sauvage, if you're into that sort of scent. Like there is no point bothering with Dior Homme 2020. The original Diorome, which I have a bottle of and I love, and it's such a unique fragrance because it has this beautiful lipsticky accord. The new Diorome has nothing to do with the previous Diorome. Like, it is a disaster. It is a complete disaster of a fragrance. It has nothing interesting to offer. Honestly, I can't speak on longevity um, because I haven't really worn it much except for one time. But it's just one of those fragrances that I smelled and immediately was like, ugh, no, no. And I just, I just think it's so, so boring. I don't even like how it smells because it has a certain harshness from the aroma chemicals used. It has a really, a lot of that Ambroxan or ISOE super, whatever they use that like, 
it, it irritates my nose. It really irritates my nose. It's a lot of like obscure woodiness and like really just, there's so much better fragrances out there in that scent profile. So just like that is probably the biggest miss of 2020 of all of fragrance wise. However, uh, speaking of lipsticky fragrances, there is a really good release and that is from Juliet Has a Gun and it's called Lipstick Fever. This is a beautiful, beautiful, waxy, lipsticky iris fragrance. It's not too sweet and by the way, it's a huge hit. That's what I'm trying to say. It just, it's very similar to, actually it's a little bit similar to Diorome. It's a little bit similar to uh, Lipstick On from Maison Margiela and it's a really good, like waxy iris. I think men can definitely wear it. The bottle looks quite feminine, but like it doesn't matter. The scent inside is totally unisex. Very, very good fragrance. Different for that house. I think it has a note of raspberry, but it doesn't really come out. It's really more about like the iris. It's really iris centric and it's what it sounds like. It's lipstick fever. It's like, it's all about that waxy lipstick iris scent. And if you're missing fragrances that have that lipsticky note, this one's a really good one. And I, I definitely encourage men and women to check it out and don't be put off by the presentation and the bottle because I'm telling you, it is totally, totally unisex. Moving on, I do actually have a Maison Margiela fragrance and this is a new release for us in Canada. I think this has been around in Europe, but it just came out in December in Sephora and I snatched it up immediately and this is Bubble Bath. The name bubble bath intrigued me immediately because bubble baths are my favorite thing in the world. They are super relaxing and so I absolutely had to jump on this fragrance. Bubble baths are like the epitome of cleanliness and warmth and comfort. I really wasn't sure what to expect from bubble bath because when I looked at the notes, I mean, it had notes of soap and coconut and I was confused because I was like, how does coconut work in a bubble bath? I'm like, it didn't make any sense, but I guess, I guess if you use a coconut soap or coconut body wash for your bubble bath, it works. And it's beautiful. This fragrance really smells very, very clean. It really does smell like a coconut body wash that you used for the bubbles in your bath and now your whole room is steamy and like warm because coconut to me is like a warm note. So it brings that warmth to the fragrance but it's super duper clean. It has like straight up, like it smells like household soap, like basic soap without fragrance, just the most basic soap you can think of. Um, that's that's the note in here soap like straight up soap and there's a certain muskiness it's very clean it's very pretty and it is like a soothing fragrance for sure and it also has notes of lavender jasmine and rose which i can't distinctly pick out in here like i really pick up the coconut i really pick out the soap note and the musky smell I will say that the longevity is not great, but it is quite a unique fragrance and I really like this take on coconut. I don't tend to like a synthetic coconut note, but in here it really works. Yeah, it just doesn't last very long. It only lasts about three, four hours max on my skin. And it's a shame because it's such a pretty scent, but I guess this would be a great evening fragrance to wear around the house. I do find it quite unique. Before I got Bubble Bath, the fragrance that I associated with a Bubble Bath was from Penhaligans and it was called Artemisia and it's an old one. It's from the early 2000s and it looks like this and it's a really beautiful bottle as well. This one's very soapy and clean as well. It almost has a suede-like element to it. It doesn't have a straight up soap smell, it just smells very luxurious, like a very luxurious um, bubble bath. Whereas this one's a coconutty bubble bath. Like you have to like coconut because it's in here. And I was worried. I was worried because I don't like a synthetic coconut, but it worked out. And I do actually really, really like this fragrance. So this one is a hit for 2020. 
If you guys want to see a more in-depth review of bubble bath, let me know down below if that's something that's interesting to you and I can do like a full elaborate in-depth review on that one. And the next fragrance that we're going to talk about is from Chloe, another one from Chloe, and it's Rose Tangerine. I sprayed it on my hand uh, probably about an hour ago and I've worn it a few times. I was very intrigued because I love tangerine. I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but tangerine is my favorite citrus. I love tangerine, clementine. I buy it all the time around Christmas time because that's when we have it in stores. It's such a delightful citrusy scent. I was hoping that there would be more of it in here, but it's almost gone. It's almost gone. It's been about an hour and it's almost gone. So the longevity, it, it bombed longevity. The uniqueness also not really doing much. Like it's a pleasant enough scent. The one thing with this fragrance is when I spray it, like upon first spray, I'm gonna ruin this fragrance for you guys if I tell you. Because once you smell it, you cannot unsmell it. Parsley. There is straight up parsley in this fragrance, like parsley, like the herb that you cook with. I smell parsley in this fragrance. It's weird. And so, yeah, it's a miss for 2020. It does bear a resemblance to the original Chloe, but it's more watered down. It's like trying to do something different, but like not really succeeding. And yeah, I just don't even really like the way it smells. So sorry, but it's a miss for sure. And the next fragrance is from Yves Saint Laurent and this is Mon Paris Intensement. This one I really love. I like a nice rose scent. This is a Chypre, so it doesn't smell like the original Mon Paris. I'm not sure why they made it a flanker. It's a sweet, juicy rose. Really pretty, like really nice black currant. It's really, really nice. It's really girly. It's a great intro to Chypre fragrances, a great intro to rose fragrances. It's like young and vibrant and sweet, but still has a little bit of that like Chypre edge, a little bit of a um, razzle dazzle to it. And I love it. I really think it's such a good fragrance. It does last a long time. I've worn it a couple times on the skin and it's great. I do find a similarity between this and Armani C, but I strongly, strongly, strongly prefer this because Armani C has an off-putting black current node and I do tend to like a black current node. I love it in here. I love it. There's a nice muskiness. There's a nice, very sexy vibe about it. It's different. It's really different. Great performance. Love the scent. It's a huge hit. Hooray for YSL. They did a great job with this one. The next release of 2020 that I want to talk about is Ariana Grande, R.E.M. Do you guys remember when she came out with Cloud and it was a huge hit and everybody loved it and it was just such a banger and then she came out with R.E.M. so I had to jump on it. I got it and I wore it and um, yeah, it's a miss because it comes out really latexy. There's something in the aroma chemicals used that comes out really, really latexy on my skin and it doesn't smell nice. And again, I know that um, my friend Alithia from The Simple Chic Life really loves this fragrance and it must smell good on her skin, but there's something with my skin chemistry and I've worn it in different conditions. I've worn it in when it was a little warmer out, when it was a little colder out, clean skin, not so clean skin, evening, daytime. I like to give my fragrances a good proper chance before I make up my mind on them. And this one was just this, like a, it was just a miss. It was just, unfortunately, there was something in that scent that I really, really disliked. Is it unique? Yeah, I would say it's unique. But I, for me, it wasn't unique in a good way. It was just like smelling latex gloves out of a container. It was very, very latexy. Like that's really what it smelled like. And I wonder what that aroma chemical is that has that scent because it's happened with other fragrances as well. Anyway, that one didn't work out. Also, it didn't last long on my skin at all. I got maybe four hours out of it. Um, but for that one, I guess what I'm saying is it could work for you and it could not, and you should not blind buy it. You should try it because I bought it and then I had to resell it as I just, I was never, ever, ever gonna wear that fragrance. But the next one 
did work out for me. And the next one is from Dolce & Gabbana. And this is the only one Eau de Parfum Intense. This came out this year. And I really like this fragrance. I just happened to get it for a steal because you know, my online shopping and my secondhand connections here and there, it worked out and I actually got it for a really good price. And yeah, I'm just such a pretty white floral powdery scent. This scent reminds me of a combination of Alien from Mugler, Olympia from Paco Rabanne, and Coffee Break from Maison Margiela. There's, I know there is no coffee note in here, but I am telling you in the opening, there is something that's like kind of sweet and caramelly coffee-esque in a way. I know it's not a nose, but I smell it. I smell it. It's something that's in there that smells that way, and but it's mostly a beautiful white floral, very rich, powdery, sweet, beautiful for the cold weather, sexy, and I just think it's a great release from Dolce Gabbana because I do not like the only one. I don't like the Dolce Gabbana Pour Femme. I don't like the intense version of it. Like all of those sweet, powdery, releases from them just I think are like super basic and not good sorry if you guys like some of the other ones that I mentioned but this one's outstanding this one's very good very nice and sweet white floral I just I love the blend in here it's a really good impressive blend so unique very long lasting and sexy and I like it so it's a hit it's a huge hit for 2020 the next fragrance is Burberry Her London Dream. I have a sample. I didn't buy a full bottle. The thing with this one is they made a killing on Burberry Her. They made a killing on Burberry Her Intense. Both of them outstanding fragrances. And then came London Dream. Actually during the lockdown, I'm pretty sure it got released during the lockdown. So anyway, I got a free sample with a Sephora order. And it's just super boring and it's been done a million times and it's kind of like a floral shampoo-y really basic scent like nothing to do with the other Burberry Her versions this one is just it's not good guys it's not it's not good it's a miss it's a miss for 2020. Next we have a Dior fragrance and this is a flanker of J'adore and this is J'adore Eau de Parfum Infinisme. This one blew me away. Like it blew my socks off, literally. No, not literally, but it did blow me away. I smelled it, I sprayed it at Sephora, I brought it home and I couldn't stop smelling it. I, I had it on a paper. Couldn't stop smelling it, had to go back, sprayed it on myself, just like went nuts for it. Like, why is this so freaking good? It's like a, a little bit spicy, rich, beautiful, elegant, white florals, yellow florals, all the florals. It's so good. It smells nothing like J'adore. This reminds me a little bit of, you know what? I don't even want to say it because not really. Kind of, I was going to say it reminds me of Givenchy L'Entredi, but that one's like a, this one's really good. It's a, it's a little peppery. It's like a little spicy in the opening. It's fabulous and breathtaking. It's a woman in a fur coat, a faux fur coat, but a really nice one. And like a beautiful chapeau and stiletto boots and just like looking so fabulous, like so ridiculously fabulous. This is an outstanding and brilliant woman, a woman that can stand on her own two feet, but is still very feminine and very elegant. This has a spin on J'adore that is so different that really the only thing that is similar about them is that they have florals and the bottle, but they smell nothing alike. So if you don't like the original J'adore like myself, I think it's not really that interesting and a little bit lackluster. This one's something else. Very long lasting, very mature, but not vintagey, not in an outdated way, of course, because it just came out. I can't stop smelling this fragrance. I just love it. It's not too sweet. It's not a super like drenched in like sweet sugar, honey, whatever, white floral. 
it's mature, edgy, slightly spicy. It's a 2020 banger. The next fragrance is from Kayali and this one I picked up blindly at Sephora. I was hoping to get the fragrance and the hair mist, but they were sold out. Whatever, it doesn't matter. This is the Deja Vu White Flower. And I like white florals. I'm always intrigued by them. I always want to try them. And so I went ahead and just blind bought it because they were having a sale. This is very sexy, very sexy. And actually it shares a somewhat similarity with the J'adore Infinisme, but it's more patchouli in this one. It's more sweet. It doesn't have a spicy accord. It's very long lasting. This one does last a super duper long time. It's a really pretty white floral. It's not too sweet. It is heady, it is bold. Um, it's glam, it's really glam and I do like it and I'm gonna say it's a hit and I'm also gonna say that I did try out the other Kayali fragrances when they came out which I believe was a couple years ago and I got all four of them little samples I think it was like a points perk with Sephora and this was before this was before the blow up this was before anybody had talked about them I had no idea what they were I was just like what is this and I tried them and Mind you, this was a couple years ago, so my taste may have changed, but I will say none of those really impressed me. I liked Musk. It was safe. It wasn't mind-blowing, but none of those really, like, they were just, uh, I don't know, they were just overdone for me, so I didn't really like them. So I was hesitant about the white flower, the Deja Vu white flower, but I'm glad that I got it because it actually is very, very beautiful, and I'll definitely wear it, and... I like this patchouli white floral combo, it turns out. Okay, you know what? We're at the last one. Let's end on a bad note, because why not? It's been a bad year. So let's end on a bad note. And this one is from Dior as well. And this is the Miss Dior Roses and Roses. And the reason why is because, not because it's a bad scent, but it is pretty much just, it's just a rose blend. And for what it is, it is overpriced. There's been so many rose fragrances that smell like pure rose. Like for that scent profile, you may as well go for tea rose from the perfumer's workshop, which is like 15 bucks. And it's a like a monster performing fragrance, super strong, very similar rose. It's just, it's just pretty much, it's just rose. It's just a soapy, clean, light rose fragrance. I was really not impressed with it. Longevity is meh fragrance is meh like not not impressive nothing to do with miss dior i'm really not understanding this whole releasing flankers that smell absolutely nothing like the pillar like aren't they supposed to be a spin on the pillar but different i don't know i guess it's a marketing thing i'll never understand anyway that one's a flop hard flop for me so sorry and also the new releases from Jo Malone. So I'm gonna go with all three from Jo Malone. The Grapevine and Cypress. Kind of a flop. Smells like Sauvage, not long lasting, not different, not really much new there. So that one's a flop. It's a masculine one. It's not a bad scent. It's not a bad scent by any means, but like boring, overpriced, nothing new, poor longevity. The Fig and Lotus was interesting. This is for a fig lover. It's a green fig. I didn't personally really like it. That one's a 50-50. I'm not sure yet. I haven't really made up my mind on whether it's a hit or a miss. And then there is the Midnight Amber and Musk, which honestly was so underwhelming for me because I was expecting something like more juniper, more amber, more musk. And it was just kind of like a watered down, very masculine, not woody, not junipery. Like I wanted it to be more, more of that juniper. It was like hardly there. So it was really more about the musk and not like a clean musk, more of like a masculine musk, which is fine. It might be fine for a masculine scent, but the longevity and performance is, is very, very poor. So that one's also a flop. So I'm sorry, but in typical Jo Malone fashion, they aren't very long lasting. I do actually really like the house of Jo Malone. Let me like all that being said, let me just mention that I do actually really like Jo Malone and there are a few fragrances that do really well for me and I'm gonna do a Jo Malone house review of the fragrances that I own later on. I've been promising you guys this and I still haven't done it, but I will, I'll do it in the new year. 
So yeah, the new Jo Malone's, I wasn't impressed. So those are all of my fragrances for 2020, the hits and the misses of 2020. There are a few that I haven't tried. I haven't really given a proper wearing to the Marc Jacobs Perfect, so I can't pass judgment on that one. I haven't tried the new um, Hermes L'Ombre de Merveille, but I'm, I am inclined to say it's gonna be a good one because I like tea and I like incense and it's like it's supposed to be like a smoky tea scent but again I haven't tried it so if you guys have tried it comment down below and let me know what you guys think of it also haven't tried the new release from Guerlain the Iris Torrifier that one I think would be good I'm intrigued by the coffee note but I don't know I have no idea I have nowhere to try it so well, again if you guys have tried it let me know what you think let me know what your favorite 2020 releases are what are your favorite discoveries of 2020 i'll do a separate video of my favorite discoveries of 2020 there are a lot but these are my favorite releases like official releases of 2020 hits and misses so yeah comment down below let me know your thoughts let's have a chat in the comment section and thank you guys so much for watching please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it please subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you guys in the next video bye